We polled uh, what turned out to be 160 legal departments who responded, uh, as well as we gathered data, billing data directly from Tracker. We have billions of dollars a month going through uh, Tracker in the form of billings from outside counsel to legal departments, and we've incorporated that into the report as well. So I thought it would be a great kickoff to the day <clears throat> to share some of the findings, some of the priorities that legal departments are concentrating on, some of the um, some of the, the results, some of the ways that legal departments are controlling costs and addressing some of the priorities that they indicated. So uh, th that's the data that we shared based on our uh, May release of the Legal Department Operations Benchmarking Report. And, but uh, what I shared today was a sneak peek of the results that are coming out in October. So some of the results stayed quite steady. In other words, the priorities that, law, that legal departments reported in the prior release are still the same priorities, not surprisingly. Things like uh, controlling outside counsel costs being the number one priority for legal department leadership, that's not surprising because the largest budget item, probably even larger than internal legal department staff, is outside counsel costs. So uh, that number needs to be tightly controlled there are huge benefits available, uh, or huge benefits in the form of savings um, that can be had through effective control of outside counsel costs. Some of the surprises, uh, use of diversity as a category for legal departments hiring outside counsel staff. That's, uh, as we all know here at Thomson Reuters, that's a, a focus, it's a priority. We have determined that, um, that outcomes, both in the way we all work together, as well as even financial and business results, are improved with the use of diverse staff. Um, you get better, more diverse ideas, you get better uh, opinions, and you get better teaming. And, uh, but what we, find in the, what we find in the report is that um, it's not a priority yet for legal departments uh, requiring their outside counsel staff to set up diverse teams to help with the legal work. That doesn't mean it won't be. I suspect in six months when we update this report that will be a, a huge increase in prioritization of diverse, diversity in choosing of law firms uh, compared to the way it is now. Part of it is through Tracker. Obviously the billing data that we incorporated in the report uh, comes directly from Tracker. Actual invoices going from outside counsel to legal departments. Um, but we polled, we have over 1,200 clients now that are on Tracker. So we polled all of them and we got 160 respondents, uh, which is statistically significant and uh, we got all shapes and sizes of law, law departments responding, uh, all sizes in terms of number of in-house staff, um, number, you know, size of, sizes of companies in terms of revenue and full-time employees. So we really got a good richness of respondents. Some of the cost management techniques are obvious, like using billing guidelines, negotiating billing guidelines with your firms. Uh, actually reviewing, having a robust review and approval process of invoices. Whether they're coming through a system like Tracker or whether you're reviewing paper bills. You know, there's huge savings that can come from, uh, from those. Using budgets, matter level budgets, to where you are discussing with the firm, what's this likely going to cost, what's our budget, and holding to that budget. But <clears throat> one of the comments, and I totally agree, that came from the audience is something that's not really related to the, the, the billing, the rates, the budgets, and that is proper scoping of a matter when it comes in. And I think this is a huge trend. Whereas in the past, when a matter would come in, it would simply be given over to outside counsel to handle as they saw fit. <clears throat> now, that, uh, the internal legal department is taking a, 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 very, a, very role, a very large role in scoping and in taking that matter strategizing, should we even be litigating this matter? And if so, how are we going to staff it? What's a, what's a, a likely outcome? What's a good, what do we consider a good outcome? What do we consider a home run? What do we consider a not so good outcome? And setting expectations both with outside, the outside firms and internally um, as it relates to those parameters. 
So if a matter is properly scoped, if the discipline is put, put into place about, um, you know, if to fight, if, if to litigate a, a matter, and if so, how, how are we going to staff that matter? Huge savings, I think, result.